Okay, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to tin our um, XD60 pigtail. Uh, as I say, you can buy these ready-made, and I, this is an old one I've got. It's not the best, but uh, and it, the leads are probably a little bit short, but they should be just about all right. Um, I've actually used some of my gunky, gunky flux paste here, uh, which I hate using, but a um, little bit better for this job here. So we're definitely going to change our tip here with the larger, larger surface area. Again, you might want to go a little bit bigger than that to do this job. See how quickly these these guys heat up. Absolutely brilliant. And this is, you know, only literally a few seconds to get to 350 degrees. Yep. And we're going to pump him up all the way up to 400. So I've got some flux on there already. Buy some heat. You're not actually uh, melting the, the um, solder onto here you're melting it into it so this is actually should be at a point where it's as should be hot enough to actually melt the solder uh, on the wires themselves but it helps to get a little bit of uh, tin on there first yep. and that should be about enough for that so nice and shiny so they are pretty much pretty much good to go they're nice and reasonably nice and shiny you don't need a you know whole mountain of solder on these things because you're gonna you're gonna solder your pads up as well um, <clears throat> so this part here uh, is again fairly straightforward we're just gonna we're gonna solder up all our we're gonna tin up rather all of our motor pads tin up our pads here motor pads here Again, you can use you can use helping hands to do this. I wouldn't be putting it in a clamp like I showed you before. I think I showed you my my clamp. The only thing I use this for is to make pigtails. Okay, so when you're actually soldering these guys into the pigtail, uh, that's quite a quite a useful thing. But you don't ever want to put something like this in a clamp like this. Again. Direction is important. Think about where you where you're coming from. I'm gonna I'm gonna start with the solder pads, the um, sorry the battery pads. So a little bit of little bit of uh, heat on the pad itself, so we get a nice pool of solder going on there. These battery pads do take a good good bit of heat. Uh, okay, so two reasonably nice um, battery pads there. So we're going to do the motor pads next. Again think of what's easiest if, if you start at that end it may be more difficult to get to this. I like to start outwards uh, from there if I'm coming on the left hander so I go from the right to the left. Doesn't matter if you get blue tack on here on the other side, you can always just take it off afterwards. If you're a bit nervous to begin with, you can always remove these little rubber rubber gummies as well. ESC prepared. Making sure of course that you've got the, uh, the negative going to the negative. See this is where you'd probably be better off with a bigger tip you see my my tip just doesn't really cover properly so I finally managed to get the XT60 leads on not my best soldering and there's too much solder on that for my liking but um, they're on reasonably well um, <clears throat> like I say you can use um, uh, 14 gauge I think this is 12 gauge wire, which is a bit thicker. Uh, maybe better off to, that's, yeah, that's uh, 14 gauge. Um, sorry, 12 gauge. That's, uh, yeah, you need to, probably need something a little bit smaller than that. 
like the 14 gauge wire to begin with because these these can be uh, quite difficult to get on. You'll see I've also soldered on a capacitor. I'll put some photos up on uh, how that progressed. It's basically, you've got a, um, I don't know if you can see that, but it's a 35 volt, 470 microfarad uh, capacitor, which is always a good idea to put onto your uh, positive and negative leads. They can go onto these as well if it, if the flight controller, if the ESC doesn't have uh, have uh, separate pads for that, but I've put them on separate pads there. And that should be, so that'll kind of like tuck in somewhere underneath that and we'll strap that down. Um, that should be a, a reasonably good length for that. Um, and now we are pretty much ready to go and solder on our motor wires. So we'll get everything. So now, now comes the crunch part where you kind of got to get everything settled down. And basically once you've got these uh, motor pads on, um, you've got, you've got your, your ESC in place and you can't, you can't move it. Um, when we get to the point where we're wiring up our flight controller, you can either do it on there. Like I say, probably a good idea to use masking tape when you're a beginner um, to do stuff. Uh, make sure that you're not you you know you're not going to be soldering anywhere that you don't want to solder. That's about that. We'll do we'll do the camera and the you know the receiver. As I said here, we'll we'll wire that all up to the flight controller in a minute. Um, but for now. Let's just get our get our motor wires on. Um, so we fire up our uh, iron, and we're going to use a nice uh, a bigger tip for that. Okay, um, can be a, that that's probably a, an excellent size tip. You don't want a huge chisel chisel tip for for this job because these pads are reasonably small. They're not like these enormous great things. So what I like to do is I like to uh, electrical wire the, the motors down nice and motor wires down nice and evenly. And generally I will go um, with the first wire to the right to the uh, motor wire here. And then I'll overlap the next one onto there. Uh, so it goes diagonally and then the last one onto there. So we need to kind of cut these off to size. And again, that can be a little bit scary, but just allow a little bit of length for that. So what we're obviously gonna do, that's probably a little bit too long, but that's okay. That's okay. Um, and then the next one's gonna go to here. Like I said, that one, sorry if my fingers are in the way, but make sure that this goes, goes, goes right don't want don't want to muck up this part here or we'll cut off your your shield <laughs> uh, okay so that's that one there and the last one and it you know honestly it doesn't really matter if uh, it's not perfect to begin with um, I'll just snip that off a little bit more and obviously what we're going to do is we're just going to snip off a little bit so that we've got our wires exposed make sure they're wound like that so there's no frayed edges so that that will be way too long um, to put on something and that one there so remember we're going this first one to here second one to there that's probably going to be a little bit long but that doesn't matter and that one is going to cut to something like that. And just take that off there. So again, make sure no frayed, frayed edges. Okay, so we're just going to tin these guys up here. And get it nice and evenly all the way through. Generally speaking, like I say, you should before 
you know, doing anything, clean your tip. Um, but once you get a bit more used to this, you can be a little bit lazy with that. As long as you get a nice, even, even solder there. Like I say, direction is, is everything. Coming to things at the right angle is super important. So this one's going to go here, probably a tad too long, but that's okay. So what angle am I coming at? I'm a left-hander, uh, I should be okay like this. So again, place him directly on. There we go, that is a nice shiny joint. Nice blob. And this guy is going to go over here. It's a good idea actually to get him from the outside like that. Then he's nice and tucked, tucked in. Okay, get him nicely on top. And that's it. So you've got three pretty nice solder joints and you see how that angle diagonally uh, so as to keep the murders out of the way a lot a lot of people they, you, you know they, they have the wires and they go out from this way so they protrude outwards or you know they'll go under the they'll go under the ESC and then out through here and then in on the pad but that tends to put a lot of stress on these on these wires and uh, you'll find that if you crash, and you will probably, you know, it that can uh, that can cause problems. So that's one. I'll go and do the rest, and I'll come back.